Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the fourth, uh, fifth lecture of APD Consulting Group Case Practice Lecture Series. My name is Anne Dang, and uh, I'm a first year master student of political economy, and I'm your speaker today on the topic of mental math and market sizing. So this, so this is our agenda today. Uh, first, we will talk. Uh, we will take a quick recap on the profitability and business situation frameworks that we did on the previous lectures, and we would try to link how mental math and market sizing kind of fit into this, the big picture. And then we would, uh, I would introduce like what kind of math and calculation that you should expect during your case interviews, and we would do some fun exercises. Mm -hmm. And you know what's more fun about it? Mm -hmm. You can compare your results with Victor Chang. And anyone uh, knows Victor Cheng? You all know, right? right. Yeah. And then uh, we would go to the most important part of this lecture, which is market sizing. And uh, I would tell you how you can evaluate your own answer, and then we'll summarize everything, and that's it. So in the profitability framework, we um, we can answer the questions like why our profits decreases or how we can increase our profits by increasing revenue and etc. So you draw an issue tree um, starting with profits is equal to revenue minus cost and then you kind of seg segment the revenue and cost sections into subsections and then you drill down until you find the problems. The, oh sorry. The business situation framework allows you to answer questions like, um, should I enter this market? Should I launch a new product in this market? And etc. So how mental math and market sizing fit into this question, uh, fit into this picture? So in the previous lectures, we didn't really tell you what you should expect or what, how, how you kind of tackle the numbers during case interviews. So we would do that um, uh, in our mental math section. And for the market sizing, it's a very important tool for you to operate your framework because, for example, you want to know if you uh, should launch a new product in the new market, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to em estimate the size of the market and you kind of operate further on. So we would, uh, in I would introduce what kind of math that you should expect during the case interviews and how to tackle them. So there are two types, the precise math and estimation math. So for example, the precise math is, for example, 40 plus 13 is equal to 53. You should not take like more than three seconds just to know the answer, right? So you should, should be able to like get the results really fast and accurate. So and what types of number that you should get it precisely? So for example, cross margin, or break even price points and etc. So cross margin is the difference between total sales revenue and the cost of the goods sold divided by the total sales revenue exp expressed in the terms of percentage. And the break even price points is the price at which the firms break even. So they don't make any profits on their sales, but you know uh, you can, we can understand the incentives of the firms by doing so, right? So by setting a low price, they enter the new market, get the fair share of the market, drive down out their competitors, and you know enjoy the monopoly later. For the estimation math, so uh, you estimate large numbers, for example, like uh, 43.5 um, billion mil billion dollars, and how how much is 23 percent of it? Right, basically. So, for example, you wanted to uh, estimate the number of shoes sold in the U.S. last year. Um, so, uh, your goal is to get the result within the 20% margin of error of the precise result. So, your your estimate should be within like 20 20% 20 higher or lower than the precise result. You don't have to get the pre it precisely. But the important thing is you should show your assumptions and logic how you get this result. So 
fun part, let's do some practice. Um, let's do some precise math at first. And uh, I would like you to get a pair of uh, a paper, a page, a white page paper. And uh, we would do some precise math. Okay, are you ready? Go. Ding. Okay, so let's compare your results. How many calculations did you do correctly under 30 seconds? Let's compare with Victor Cheng. Mm -hmm. So he did nine questions under 30 seconds with the accuracy of 100%. So he did only nine questions under 30 seconds, but he did them all correctly. So what, what you should prioritize is even though you only get one or two or three calculations correctly uh, no, uh, within 30 seconds, but you should get them correctly because once you get the number wrong, all of your case study is thrown out of the window. And I don't think the interviewer will forgive you for the mistake. Um, before we do some exercises with the estimation uh, mathematics, I'll give you some tips. For example, you want to calculate 6,713 multiplied by 23%. What, what will you do? So my suggestion is to route them intelligently. So you, if you round the 6,713 up to 7,000, uh, 7, then you want to round down the 23% in order to neutralize the effects. So with the rounded up numbers, my result is 1,400. Compared with the precise result, which is 1,544, I am in the 10% margin of error. But it is acceptable because it's still within the 20% range, right? And if you want to calculate 20, uh, 20 over 1.5, well, you can do it as, you know, 20 over 1.5 is like 200 over 15. And you can break it down further, it's equal to 150 over 15, plus 50 over 15. So 100 o uh, 150 over 15 is 10. And 50 over, uh, 50 over 15, well, it's kinda, it's around three, right? Because three multiplied by 15 is 45. So it's about, uh, so my number is 13. Or you, you you can like simplify the, uh, the ratio into 40 over 3. Mm -hmm. And as we know, 4 over 3 is like 1.3333. We know that uh, 40 over 3 is 13.33. And it's, it's close, 13 and 13.33. Not much difference, right? So let's do some estimation math because practice makes perfect. Yeah? OK, are you ready? Ready? Okay. Okay, let's compare your results with Victor Jane. So how many calculations did you do correctly under 30 seconds? Me, not much. 
So, but Victor J answers seven questions correctly in those 30 seconds, all of them correctly, yeah. So the point is that still you want to get the number right. Don't mix up millions with billions. If you miss like several zeros, it's over, yeah. So let's go to the most important part of this lecture, which is market sizing. Before going into like how we think, how we solve the question. Why market size estimation? So in interviews, it can be an independence question. For example, like how many shoes are manufactured in the US per year or cons consumed per year or embedded into a case. So for example, I want to enter a new market. What's the size of the market right now, right? And second, clients ask you a lot. It just come up, um, comes up, right, in uh, any, any, any like conversation. This afternoon, I asked my friend, oh, you know how many brownies are there in this university? I love brownies. So, how, so now, how to do a market sizing case? I need you to remember three things. First of all, you need to have a good structure Second of all, you have to have um, reasonable and defensible assumptions. So use your common sense, only, only use your gut feelings if there are no other options. And math, precise, and estimation, did it fast but accurately. So why what, what do you think is kind of the obstacles of market sizing? It's when you lack of data, but you try to come, like you calculate a, a number, right? But, but you need to have a basic numbers of things. So some key numbers to keep in mind, the US population is 320 million because we're in the US. So if you're from China, if you're from Korea, then I suggest you know the basic demographic numbers of your country. If you take the interviews in the uh, office in your country, then you should know these numbers. Life, uh, sorry. Hmm? The life expectancy of an American is 80 years, even distribution between ages. So there's the same number of two years old as 72 years old. And there are 100 million US households. So if you have to remember any important numbers, remember this. Let's, let's have an e example. How many gas stations are there in the US? Step zero, clarification. So because this question is quite straightforward, so there's no, nothing for you to clarify, right? But for example, if the interviewers ask you, um, how about the market size of shoes in um, some com uh, countries like Bangladesh, you should ask them, you should ask him or her, like what, what are the key numbers that we need here, right? What are the populations, like how, how yeah, anything you can get. Step one, choose an approach because as the profitability framework and also the business situation framework, we need an issue tree because we need an approach to deal with the hypothesis. So we need a structure to answer these questions. So for example, if I want to know the number of gas stations in the US, I, I can, my, my first approach would be, I would divide the number of cars over the number of cars a gas mm -hmm. station serves, right? It can be per day, it can be per week, per month, or per year. But during the structuring, you would know like which kind of time frame that you can choose to, to deal with this question. Or you, you, can, you, you can calculate by multiplying the gas station density with the total area of the US. But think about it. How do you know like the gas station density? You cannot know, right? Or any other structure that you might come up with, but I cannot. But I'm, I'm going to follow my first approach, which is to divide the number of cars over the number of cars a gas station serves. So 
So the number of gas stations, I would calculate by the no then dividing the number of total visits to the gas station per month over the visits a gas station serves per month. And for the num I um, the way I calculate the number of total visits to the gas station per month is to the to multiply the number of cars with the number of visits is car to the gas station per month. And to calculate the number of visits of visits a gas station serves per month, I multiply the number of visits a car a gas station serves per day by a number of days in a month, which I choose thirty, because thirty is better uh, to calculate than thirty one, right? So in order to find the number of visits a gas station serves per day, I multiply the number of pumps with the number of cars each pump serves per day. So you know my logic and how I approach to solve this question, right? So calculation. We set the structure aside and we calculate from bottom to the top. We expand the structure from top to bottom, but we calculate from bottom to top. So we, we use the key numbers. The total population is 320 million. And we assume that the, um, the number of people aged from 20 to seven, 70, we use each, each of them we use a car. We have a car. Mm -hmm. So we have 200 million people aged from 20 to 70. So we have the number of cars that is 200 million. When, once you get a number, got it down on your structure. So in the case interview, First of all, take one page, like write down your structure, leave this page aside, and do your calculations in on another page. As soon as you get one number, take down on your structure, write down on your structure, so you know what kind of calculations that you have done and what calculations you have left. Because under the pressure in case interviews, you, you would get frustrated, you would get confused. So find out a way for you to follow your own structure. So then each car we visit gas station twice every month. Take, down it, take it down on your structure. So the number of gas station visits per month is 400 million. Next, we move on to another branch. And we also calculate from bottom to top. So you, you don't really know the number of pumps each station has, so you need to assume again. Each gas station has eight pumps, I assume. So every 20 minutes, a car comes to the pump, and cars come mostly between 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I will have between 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., which is 12 hours, uh, multiplied by 60 minutes per hour, and divided by 20 minutes to derive the number of visits per day for each pump, which is 36. So a day, for a day, the number of visits served by gas station is 288 visits, multiplied by 30 days in a month. So we have 8,640 visits a month. So the number of gas station is uh, 400 million divided by 8,640. We use the estimation mathematics skill that we have done so far and derive the number of gas station, which is 50,000. So now, how to evaluate your own answer? Ideally, your result should be within the 20% margin of error. So let's check our estimation for the number of gas station in the US. So our estimation is around 50,000 gas stations in the US compared with what I have Googled, which is 121,000 around uh, gas stations in the US. So our margin of error is actually 60%. Oops. So let's look at our assumptions again. First, our first assumption is that each of 200 million people aged 20 from 20 to 70 owns a car. So the total number of cars in the US is 200 million. Is it 
reasonable. So we base this assumption on the population. And we know that uh, we assume that there's even distribution between ages. So de we derive the number of 200 million. But we also use, can use another approach. We know that there are 100 million households in the US. And this is the nuclear rather than extended households. So there's father, mother, and children in the households. Mm -hmm. So even, even you think of the children have o are over the age that they can drive, each household would reasonably have two cars, right? One for mom, one for dad, and the children can use them in whenever the dad or the mother don't, doesn't use the car. So we still derive 200 million cars in the US, so it's reasonable. Let's move on to the second assumptions. So each car needs to refuel two times a month. So each car visits a gas station twice per month. I think it's also reasonable, right? Twice per month. So let's look at the mm -hmm. third assumption. We assume that each gas station has eight pumps. And every 20 minutes, a car comes to a pump. Cars come mostly between 7 AM to 7 PM. There are a lot of places that we can add trust in the assumption. So for example, we know that there are peak hours and there are off peak hours. And are you sure are we sure that like every 20 minute, minutes a car will come to a pump? No, right? It can be 10 in during the peak hours, it can be 30 during the off peak hours. So if all the can this assumption increase our results with a multiplier of two in order to get closer to the precise result? It can, right? So the lesson is that w after you derive your own results, challenge your own assumptions. Talk, tell the interviewers, you know what, even though we have these assumptions, if we alter them a little bit, I think we can get this number. So that uh, in that way, your uh, uh, approach and your answer will be more objective. And also remember that the time limit for each case interview is 15, from 15 to 20 minutes. So, but the market sizing is com more common to be embedded in a case rather than a standalone case. So in, in act actual time, the actual time that you can have for market sizing is only five or 10 minutes. So start with the imperfect assumptions first and then expand your arguments later if you have time. But uh, so no matter what, even if your result is imperfect, the interviewers will give you credits for how you structure the case, what, I what your approach to answer the question is, like how quick and accurate your mathematic is. Um, and are, are you comfortable with dealing with large numbers? Don't miss up millions and billions again. And whether your assumptions are reasonable and defensible. Because after the interview, the interviewer can kind of challenge you the assumptions, right? If you, you know, like if you haven't gone to challenge yourself yet, the interviewers can ask you the questions. Like, oh, are you sure your assumptions are correct? And you, you should prepare to kind of defend your assumptions. And also present your solution in a client-friendly way. So when I said you have to do your math quick and accurately, the, f the speed is not a problem because when you deal with clients, you don't want to do your math too quick and so that they cannot follow you. And when they have to ask you questions, oh, you know how you derive this number? They look back, they feel bad. Don't make the clients feel bad, right? So summary and actions. So we know that for precise math, you have to be accurate. Yeah, reasonably fast. Uh, for estimation math, your goal is you should derive a number within the margin, 20% margin of error with the precise number. And for market sizing, you should get a good structure reasonable assumptions, and then check your assumptions again as a self-check or sanity check. And actions. Search for basic key of information about the country you're from and or currently residing in. 
Practice market sizing every day by asking yourself questions like, oh, this is me again. Estimate how many brownies are consumed in the US every day. Or how large is the market for AI applications in healthcare industry? Also prepare for questions like, estimate how long it would take to move or relocate an average size mountain 10 miles using an average size drug. You can see the answer on Victor Jang's website. Also practice your precise and estimation math. So this is the end of um, our fifth lecture in our case practice lecture series. We only have one lecture left, which is uh, synthesis, synthesis and conclusion. So if you miss a lecture and you want to review a previous lecture's material, you can visit our YouTube channel. And case practicing, so from now on, we would um, get you in a pair of two, and you would take around 30 minutes to practice with each other. And I want you to track down the partner's performance during the practicing, whether they did good on where, uh, and where they got stuck, so, and summarize their strong points and weak points. And also, if you want more practice, you can let us know by filling in our case pairing questionnaire, and we will find a partner for you. Thank you.